Hey, it's Dave here. In this video, we're taking a look at how to use Ring cameras with Frigate by using the Ring MQTT add-on to create an RTSP camera feed, letting them behave just like cameras that natively support RTSP. This means you can integrate features like motion detection or facial recognition and use it just like a regular camera feed inside Home Assistant, even though the stream itself comes through the Ring Cloud. I'll walk you through the setup, show you the camera running in Frigate, point out a few of the limitations, and wrap it up with a quick demo automation that reacts when someone's detected. Now, I can't imagine too many Home Assistant users choosing Ring cameras for Frigate over one that natively supports RTSP or OnFiv, so I keep this video quick and to the point. Now, just to clarify, while the Ring MQTT add-on can output an RTSP URL, that stream still passes through Ring's cloud servers and requires a constant internet connection, and as the documentation puts it, Attempting to leverage this project for continuous streaming is not a supported use case, and attempts to do so will almost certainly end in disappointment. Now, an important note about Ring doorbells, if you try to use a Ring doorbell as your frigate camera, the doorbell button will stop working whenever a live stream is active, because Ring MQTT keeps the video feed open. Essentially, it turns your doorbell into a regular camera. So if you only own a Ring doorbell and were hoping to use it with Frigate, this method just isn't practical. Honestly, stop watching now because I can't help you with that setup. The setup I'll be showing in this video uses my Ring doorbell purely as an example since it's the only Ring camera I have, but the add-on is best suited for Ring cameras, not doorbells. If you already own Ring cameras and just want to integrate them into Frigate, this video is for you, but if you're planning to buy new hardware specifically for Frigate, I strongly recommend choosing a camera that natively supports RTSP or OnViv. You'll get a fully local stream, faster response time, a much more reliable experience, and not to mention they still function even without an internet connection. All right, with that out of the way, Let's get started by installing the Ring MQTT add-on. To install the Ring MQTT add-on, if you go to Settings, then go to Add-ons, select Add-on Store, then click the three dots and select Repositories, and you're going to paste in the following GitHub address. Then click Add, close that window, now we're going to do a search for Ring MQTT, and that's the one you want. Select Install. Once that's restarted, we're going to check Watchdog so it restarts if it crashes. I'm also going to add it to the sidebar, and now I'm going to click Start. Now you can either select Open Web URL or you can click on it from the sidebar here. And this is just going to take you to the stage where you sign in with your Ring account. So you only need to do this once. So from here, I'm just going to put in my Ring credentials. Then it's going to ask me to authenticate with MFA. You should receive this as a text message. Now I'm gonna click Submit and the account is now authenticated. Now I'm just going to go back in to that add-on. Now if you go to the Log tab, you should see it's going to reference your Ring device. I'm just going to do a search for Front, because I've got Front Door, and I can see there's plenty of entries showing here. So we know the authentication's worked, and we know we've added our Ring device to MQTT. Now we're going to go to the Configuration tab. 
Now, in terms of what these settings are and what they do, if you head over to the Documentations tab, it will detail all the configuration options and what they do. Most of these settings, you're pretty much just going to leave exactly as they are. MQTT URL, just leave that as it is. Now for username and password, this is optional but advised. Make sure enable camera is turned on. And if I just scroll down a bit further, you'll see there's a setting here under network. And if I just check show disabled ports, this allows you to open up a port and you'll probably want it set to 8554 like it is showing here, but you don't actually need to enable it. It's only if you're accessing the RTSP address from outside of Home Assistant. Now in my environment, I'm running Frigate via the Home Assistant add-on, so I don't actually need that enabled, but in some of my previous videos, I've advised to confirm the RTSP address is working using VLC player before you start messing around with the YAML in Frigate. You won't be able to test this unless you enable this option because it won't work. If you've got Frigate running off a separate piece of hardware, while I haven't tested this myself, you will almost certainly need to enable this port, otherwise it's not going to be able to access it. I'm going to save it and leave it on just so that I can demonstrate it working in VLC player. So I'm just going to click save. And I'm just going to restart. Once that's restarted, we're going to get the RTSP URL and there's a couple ways you can achieve this. If you go to settings, then go to devices and services, and do a search for MQTT and select this one. And we're going to find your device, whatever you called it, from your Ring app. And I know it's called Front Door, which is this one here. And now if I scroll right to the bottom, you're going to see Diagnostic. And if you click on Info, then Expand Attributes, it's going to list the RTSP URL here. Another way to get it is if you know the entity ID, which it does show here, and you can see I've got sensor.frontdoorinfo. I'm just going to copy that and go into Developer Tools. So if you go to Developer Tools, and I'm now going to paste in that entity, and you can see here it's also got the URL which we need as well. So either of those options will work. Now to make this a little bit more complicated, I'm just going to copy this link. But you'll notice it only seems to work in Home Assistant and not externally. And I found that this particular section here, where it's listing a random set of characters and it finishes with MQTT, you'll need to change this to the IP address of your Home Assistant server or the device which is running Ring MQTT. I'll show you what happens if you don't do this. So from VLC player, I'm going to select media, open network stream, and I'm just going to paste the URL exactly as it was showing from Home Assistant. And when I click play, it's not going to work. Now I'm going to do exactly the same but this time I'm going to change this section to my Home Assistant URL and it's referencing the port 8554 and then it's got that camera feed. When I click play now, you can see it's working. That's something that might catch you out because if you're using it externally, you have to change it to the IP address. If I just close that window and go into Frigate, In the setup I've made earlier, you can see the link works perfectly fine. But if you're using it externally, you have to change this part to the IP address. This really caught me out and I didn't know why it wasn't working until I kind of figured it out by mistake. Now while I've got the YAML open, I'm just going to quickly explain the setup. So this section here, I've just got the stream URLs 
kitchen is one of my Reolink cameras, which I set up previously. And this is the ring doorbell where I've got that link. And if I just scroll down a bit further, and I've kept it really minimum, this is the ring camera. I've referenced the path again, but you'll see here it's just got the local host or loopback address. And then that front door at the end is actually referring to this part where it references front door. Now, because I'm using facial recognition, something I forgot to mention in my facial recognition video is you need to enable track and person because facial recognition won't kick in until it's first detected a person. So that's something you'll also need to add if you're using facial recognition. And if I just scroll down to the bottom, you'll see here, this is where I've got my code for facial recognition. It's set to true. And then I've just got various settings which are applied at a global level to all the cameras unless you wanted to individually do them nested under where the camera settings are. Now, if you did want to set a password, which is recommended, I'm going to go back into the Ring MQTT settings. So I'm going to go to settings, go to add-ons, do a search for Ring, open up that add-on, then go to the configuration tab. And I'm just going to set a really secure username and password. I'm going to save changes. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to turn off exposing this port because I don't actually need it since I'm using Frigate via the add-on. I'm going to save that as well and then restart. Now I'm going to go back into the Frigate settings. And the only thing you need to do is just before those characters, I'm going to paste in the username, colon, password, and the at symbol. Now I'm going to save and restart. And I should find the camera feed is still going to work. But this time it's applying the password. So you can see the camera feed is still working. But this time it's got a highly complicated username and password. Now originally, I spent some time trying to create an automation that would trigger when the doorbell was pressed so it would announce that someone is at the door and then follow up by saying who it is if the last recognized face was found. But because of the ring doorbell's limitations I mentioned earlier, where it can't function properly when the live stream is running, that wasn't possible. So instead, I've put together a slightly different demo where the trigger is when a person is detected rather than the doorbell is being pressed. I'm basically treating the doorbell like a regular camera and this automation still tells you who the person is if they have been recognized. So let's head back to Home Assistant and I'll walk you through it. If you go to settings, then select devices and services and do a search for Frigate. And the camera I'm working on is front door. And the entities we're going to be using for this automation is last recognized face and person occupancy. So when person occupancy detects someone, it's then going to broadcast an announcement to say there is someone outside which you'll get on your mobile phone and your Amazon Echo. Then about two seconds later, it's going to check the state of last recognized face. And if that equals a value of a known person, it will then follow up by saying, it's Dave, it's John, whoever that person is. But if it doesn't find a last recognized face, it just simply won't follow up. So you're either gonna get a notification saying there's someone outside and that's it, or, it'll be, there's someone outside, it's Dave. So to get those entities, we'll click on this one, go to settings, and you can see that's the entity ID we're going to need for person occupancy. And for last recognized face, 
same thing, go to settings, and that's the entity ID we're also going to need. Now we're going to head over to automations to put this together. So if you go to settings, go to automations and scenes, select create automation, select create new automation, and if you click on these three dots, select edit in YAML, and I've just got this example code I'm going to paste in. Now the way this code is going to work is the initial trigger is when this binary sensor front door person occupancy is set to on. Then it's going to fire out two actions. It's going to send a notification to my mobile and a notification to my Amazon Echo. Notify.notify .notify means that all of your mobile phones which have the companion app will receive it instead of a specific mobile phone and then notify.alexa media player is a specific Alexa device. So you've got this one here for the mobile phone and this one here from the Amazon Echo. Then it's going to wait about three seconds because that just gives it enough time to say there is someone outside. Then it's going to run this template here where it's constantly checking the state of last recognized face. And when it eventually doesn't equal unknown, unavailable, or none, or a blank value over the period of a 15 second time, it's then going to proceed to the next stage, which is this part here, where again, it's going to send a notify.notify .notify to all of your mobile phones, but this time it's going to say it's, and then it's going to pull the value of the last recognized face. So in my demo, it's going to say it's Dave, and it's going to do exactly the same for your Amazon Echo, where it's going to say it's followed by the value of the last recognized face. Now, for those of you who aren't comfortable with YAML, if you just paste in that code, which I will be sharing, you can click on these three dots and then choose edit in visual editor. And then you can navigate through and change any of these settings just by using the GUI, which you may find it a little bit easier. I'm now going to save those changes, then click rename, and now that automation is created. And now I'm going to move over to a pre-recording of the automation working. If you just keep your eyes out on the top right where it's got developer tools, and you'll see binary sensor front door is going to change from off to on, then on the bottom right, you'll notice the when person detected at front door is also going to highlight because it's being triggered. And while that's happening, I've synced it up with a video feed on the left of me just walking up to the door, a person being detected, it identifies it's me, and then you're going to see a notification on my mobile phone at the same time. There is a person outside. It's Dave. And that's it. We've got the Ring MQTT add-on running, streaming into Frigate, and even triggering automations when someone's detected. Now, like I said earlier, the setup isn't perfect, especially if you're using a Ring doorbell, since a live stream will stop it from working like normal. But if you have a few Ring cameras around the house, and want to make them a bit more useful inside Home Assistant, this is a great way to bring them into your setup. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel to see more smart home automation tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.